Good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. Good morning, I'm Karen. We're going to start off with show notes today as usual. Um, we just had our last evening with Medium event for the 2019 year. Thank you to everyone who bought tickets mm -hmm. this year. Every single event was sold out um, and we've had people already inquiring about 2020. The dates have been released and you can purchase tickets on the website at buysarlo.com. Your 2020 dates are April 24th, August 28th and December 4th. We have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. Those are 10 to 12 minute shows on emotional and spiritual intelligence. The very first of five is always available for free on our website by sarlo.com. The remaining four that attach to that series are found at patreon.com slash by Sarlo. Good. And last but not least, we have gift certificates and personal sessions available. You can submit a request for a personal session over the website or by contacting us directly. Um, and sessions can be done anywhere in the world via Skype, FaceTime, telephone, or Zoom. So you certainly don't have to be in our little North Bay, Ontario to be receiving a treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and Christmas is coming up. So if you know anyone who uh, would love a gift certificate for a session, you can contact us directly for those. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. Okay. So we are in the month of December. We are doing feel good shows as per Karen's request. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a, a client story. Two. Uh, you got two client stories. I have today. two. And they both have to do with animals. Okay. So the first one is um, about a duck. And this is a, um, this started Kelly earlier one day when I started experiencing quite a bit of pain in my neck and in the shoulder area and in the upper part of the chest. I thought it was going to be a client, a person, a, a human being. It didn't dawn on me that it was going to be an animal, a bird. <laughs> I just realized I said an animal. <laughs> Non-human. Yeah, okay, good. I thought... As each client came during the day, that the spirit guides would say, okay, ask this person. Okay, it's them. And as each person came and left, they never told me. The guides. The guides never said that it was, that it was with each person. So at the end of the day, I, I was still left with this pain, and I wasn't able to place it. So if anyone is listening and goes, What? That's when we refer to it as mere touch synesthesia. Mm -hmm. And we do have prior shows on that if you're wanting more information about it. Now, I'm going to interrupt because with the sensation, you also heard. Oh, yeah. I heard I want to live. And I just remembered thinking that that would be an important message that went with the pain. I guess so. And that's all that I knew about that was mm -hmm. the pain and the sentence, the statement. And that is a powerful statement, not something you forget. So anyway, I went through the day, saw the clients, they left. I went to my cell phone and on my cell phone, a friend who is also a client um, texted a message to me asking if she could um, ask me a question as a client and that she would like to do it over text and would she be crossing a boundary? Would that be okay with our friendship? And I said that I gave her permission to go ahead and do that. And so she asked me if I got anything about her duck. And I replied that I, that I wasn't sure, but that I had pain in my neck and shoulder and chest area. And if that applied, then yes, I was getting her duck. If not, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what she was referring to. And so she, she replied back immediately that that was actually the injury for the duck. And she sent a picture to confirm it. Mm -hmm. And then I texted back, she wants to live without her questioning me. Because that had been the statement that I got with the pain. Mm -hmm. And she texted back, that was my question. Thank you for answering it without me asking it. I wanted to know if she wanted to be put down or if she could survive this. This is severe. Because she said she could see the duck's heart palpitating. That's how much of its muscle and tissue and feathers had been removed in the attack. 
So a little background to her duck. This is a pet duck that lives on her property. She lives in the bush. She does live in the wilderness, not in the middle of a city. This duck is not living in her house in a cage. It is outside. And she does have a coop where she has hay and everything set up for this duck and her partner for the winter. So that's a little little background piece. So there's a partner there. So I asked her if I would be able to do energy healing on the duck for 48 hours to see if it could help her heal, if it could keep away infection. Um, because, well, I don't know anything about ducks, but I just imagine if you have an open wound, it, it you're at risk. You're at, yeah, you're at risk for, for other issues, including infection, right? And I don't know anything about animals in the sense of I'm not a veterinarian. I don't know any of these things. So I asked her for permission to call another friend who is a veterinarian and ask her what could be done. So I did. I called this other friend and asked her. And she said that that wasn't in her field of expertise, but that there were two hospitals in Sturgeon Falls and Sudbury, vet clinics or vet hospitals, that did specialize in wild animals and birds, and that they may have better answers for her. She didn't want to give incorrect information or guess at anything. Mm -hmm. So we made the agreement that she was going to see if the duck could stay alive. So she brought her into her home. She said she created a space in a closet. And I don't know what that means because I never saw a picture and there was no details about that. But she was trying to make her as comfortable as possible. Comfortable and safe. Because Mm -hmm. I guess there's also a fear of it's going to come back. Whatever attacked the duck was going to come back. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also northern Ontario and we're in our winter. Mm -hmm. Oh, true. There's there's a lot she needs to be protected from if she's got an open, a deep open wound. Right. Uh, Yeah, you're absolutely right. I hadn't even thought about that, but but the cold as well. Mm Mm-hmm. So she made a space for for the duck in her home in a closet. And I set out to do energy healing for the next couple of days. And I asked her if she could check in with me or I would check in with her once or twice each day to see if it was of any help. Now, I also understand that she and her family are doing what they can to help the duck as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just the energy healing. I want to give credit to everybody here. (laughs) Um. So I, d- I did, and the, the second day she sent um, a message to me saying that she was still alive and that she was still um, in the closet, I think it was, but not moving around, and that she was not taking in any food. And she asked, out of concern, if she should be worried about the fact that she wasn't taking in any food. So mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I, the message I got at that point was, no, that she would be okay, And that she would start taking in water the following day. So full 48 hours after after she had been attacked. And we weren't sure if that was going to be okay or not. Like if if that was going to be a fatal thing right there. And again, like I don't. Again, I'm going to reiterate how very little I know about ducks. I feel like audience members understand how little you know about ducks. Okay. And maybe how little she knows for medicinal reasons as well. Mm -hmm. So the second day, or the uh, she got a hold of me as well, like again by texting, and sent me a little video of the duck in the bathtub. So now she's in the tub, and she's just starting to play with the water a little bit, and moving her her head and her neck. Mm -hmm. So she's got some mobility and we felt that by even playing in the water and being in it, that she was probably ingesting some of it Mm -hmm. and perhaps the duck knew enough to, I'll say, play with her beak. I don't want to move my head too much, but to play with her beak, to flick it in the air so that maybe some of it Mm -hmm. was like, um, I don't know if it was to soothe herself or if it was to make sure that there was a bit of water for cleanliness. We're just going to say that we trusted her, <laughs> that she knew what she was doing. And, and and this person or the duck's family. So they let her be in there and then back to resting again. So 
I did more energy work again to see if we were going to be able to keep her to the 48 hour mark. And then she said if she made it to 48 hours, that she would be okay after that. But this was going to be a very slow recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really, I still don't know long term how she's going to be okay to fully heal from this. Yeah, I really don't know. But Anyway, the story as of today still is, is that currently I have three videos of her and she's been playing in the tub. She's been drinking the water and she's now walking around. So that's, that's where we're at so far. Mm -hmm. And so, so far she's alive and she seems to be doing well. And I would like to be able to say in two more weeks or one month or three months, um, let the listeners know how this little duck is doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going, I'm going to say her name. Her name is Bebe. So that if people are listening and they think, okay, I want to send her energy too. Aww. How do I do it? it? Sometimes when we know, when we know a name or we know how to identify something. Yeah, we make a connection. Yeah. And, and then we think, okay, um, maybe tonight when we say our prayers or whatever people do, if it's a prayer or if it's a meditation, yeah. yeah, or you're standing in your kitchen or you're just sitting at home listening to this right now, having your tea or your coffee, driving in your car, that you just send out your thought, your intention for healing. I'm, I'm asking people to send it to Bebe. And some people might think, I'd like that. If I can contribute to healing a part of the planet in some way with a, with a thought of love or set the intention to heal, I want to participate. So there, mm-hmm. there there's an invitation for your do good today. Cool. And I will follow up with, with this friend um, and ask her how she's doing and see if I can have permission to post a, a picture for people to see the injury. If they want to, and, you it's, know, it's graphic. So if oh. anyone is thinking they want to see it, um, I, I would say brace yourself. Yeah. Especially if you have a weak stomach. Oh, true. Or if your kids are with you. Okay. That's fair. That's very fair. So, okay. So we will follow up with that on another show. Sure. And now we're going to move into a second story. A dog. Yeah. But Hank. for anyone who can't connect to duck someone feels your friend feels the way you do about your dog towards her own duck yeah and i mean i i also realize people out there could be listening to this thinking i shoot them or or i eat them or i you know what i mean like i but even i mean even farmers develop a relationship with their their cattle and and their livestock before they are grateful and sacrifice them yes. to use all parts of them, yes. right? So whether you're listening as a vegan or you're listening as descendants of farmers, <laughs> um, whatever whatever it is, I think there can be empathy for a living being. Well, yeah, and in this case, I think when you are on a farm and you have certain animals, I'll say for product or produce, I don't know, a product, yep. that there are also farms that don't have them for that purpose. Oh, yeah, they're sanctuaries. Yeah, and that people do understand and can wrap their head around the duck for different purposes, mm-hmm. I hope. <laughs> I've seen some of the most adorable videos on YouTube of ducks cuddling yeah. dogs or ducks yeah. um, hugging their humans. Mm-hmm. Like, I think anyone can appreciate that animals have their own personality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that you can, you can grow to love them. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, so the second story is about Hank and Jane, and I have lots of notes, and I've given you a copy so that we have... That I have not yet read. Okay, so there's, like, I want, I always want accuracy when we're telling a story. Um, This one has different components to it, so what I did was, I want to give a little bit of background. Jane has been a client for several years. I've seen her in person, and now, because she has moved... It's long distance, and currently she lives on an island. So the, it is a remote situation for her to be able to care for her dog and to have access to care for her dog. Mm-hmm. And because he's beginning to age, his needs are changing. 
Mm-hmm. And with that, the need for physio, and, and people are going to listen to this, he's needed physiotherapy, he's needed to see a naturopath, he's needed a chiropractor, and a veterinarian. Mm-hmm. So through his life course, she is committed to, um, to partnership. This is, this is an absolute story of partnership between these two. Can I, can I read the beginning of this? Yeah. I'm just seeing this for the first time. Um, she writes, hi, Karen. Okay, so I found a few notes. I've tried to recall the sessions for you, but if you need more details, let me know. Mm-hmm. So it op- definitely open. I'm happy to help more. I tried to give the affirmations as best I could. The affirmations come two ways. Outright that the vet says the same thing you do, mm-hmm. or I ask for the things he needs and they agree and it heals him. I like that she's identified both ways Mm -hmm. because you can have something, you can have information given ahead of time and the vet confirms it or an outside source confirms it, Mm -hmm. or you can have the experience itself and then come and get affirmations that you actually did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this has been, this has been very important for Hank in a number of ways. So we'll go through some of the little scenarios Um, that she has chosen to share. But, okay, so also Jane, like, I mean, she's asked us outright in the email to change names, which is great. I love that. We always want to preserve Mm -hmm. identity to the best of our ability. Um, (laughs) But she's actually done this in chronological order. (laughs) I just think that's so fantastic. So why don't you read one? Sure. I know nothing about this. So if I read it, do you want to just talk to me more about it? Sure. Okay. I feel like an interviewer. Here's what I have in my notes. June 19th, 2019. So this is this is recent. Um, so we're checking in for Hank. There's a rectal abscess. At the time, Hank was going through frequent painful procedures at the vet. Hank wanted to have anesthesia for the next procedure, and he was not able to tolerate... Um, pardon me. Oh, because he was not able to tolerate it without emotionally... Um, Like having uh, undue stress, I guess. Oh, yeah. And the guides told you that he needed pain medication and that he had nausea and a sore stomach, but that it was short term. Mm -hmm. So that's important because if if we know they can endure something and you get the message that it's short term, Mm -hmm. that's that's good information Mm -hmm. or good news, I should say. Um, He was healing slowly and needed antibiotics longer. At the vet appointment, she offered antibiotics longer and was relieved that I requested anesthesia for the procedure as she felt this was um, what he also felt he needed to support him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's just see here. Sorry. Oh, and the vet felt that she could do a better job this way too. It was Mm -hmm. the last treatment needed uh, for the procedure and the antibiotics, antibiotics, pardon me, healed him. He also felt supported when I fed him out of my hand um, and wanted me to continue to do this. So Hank had given all of these messages. And this was a process. So he has had these rectal abscesses for a while. He's had more than one. And from time to time, she calls. So this is a client who sees me once a month on a regular basis. Prior to Hank having any issues. That's that's correct. But we've always checked in on Hank at the beginning of each of her one-hour sessions. Love it. So she calls like the first, I think it's the first Friday morning at 9 a.m. of every month, that type of thing. And she does a check-in for her dog, for Hank. And we go through his emotions, his social needs, his physical needs. And he will say certain things like, I'm not feeling well, um... I need to go back to the vet. The rectal abscess is starting to bother me again. Mm. Or it's the vet already knows about it and we've been waiting to see when to handle it. I'm ready. I want to go now. Remembering that she lives on an island and that she has to make these accommodations plus her work schedule to travel to see this veterinarian. So this is not just like here in North Bay where you hop in your car and you can go over the same day. Mm. So he, it's very important that he tell us when he's in pain, how much pain he is in, if it's tolerable or not, if it's affecting if his eating, if it's an, or what it's affecting his moods, 
um, if he can go to daycare or can't because of what, what he's feeling, if he needs a day at home, if he wants to sit with her in the car because she travels as a nurse on this island, home to home to see people. So does he, and she doesn't want to put him into distress sitting in a car, mm-hmm. you know, especially like if it's in the summer or whatever. And I, when people hear this, please understand this is a nurse. She's responsible. This dog does not sit in a car with the windows rolled up. Do not lose your shit. Mm-hmm. This is a person that takes her dog out and walks him. Oh, and we, I think you said this at the beginning, like this is partnership. Totally. So she's very aware of his needs and does n- would never put him into any situation of distress. Mm-hmm. So if people are listening to this and they're getting all wrapped up into s- their own thought about this is terrible behavior, no, it is not. Yeah, she's on top of shit. She sure is. More than 99% of the people out there. So anyway, so we get this opportunity once a month to check in on Hank's rectal abscess. And he gets to say, I need antibiotics. And then she gets these affirmations from the vet. So we've learned over many years, the accuracy of the messages. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it has built up a trust system that the guides are giving me correct information because she's getting that validated on a monthly basis because he's had to go so often for this and other issues as people are going to hear this is not just one issue or pardon me this is one issue of many for for him Mm -hmm. that she gets validations that yes the rectal abscess needs to be dealt with yes I need these things here's my emotional component I, I need you to feed me out of your hand um, I need snuggles. I want to sleep in the bed with you. I, I don't want to sleep in the bed with you. Don't touch me. <laughs> and I think as partner says that. Well, I was just going to say, and I think as <laughs> yeah. human beings, I need space. I need touch. It's it's just about needs. Yeah, very well, very much. And and also personality. So you mm-hmm. get to, like I've been so blessed that I get to see the the love relationship between Hank and Jane. Mm-hmm. And I've been able to participate in it for years now. Yeah, you've given Hank a voice. Yes. And and it allows for Jane to let go of levels of anxiety or stress because she has to travel. So I'm not saying Hank sits in the car every day. I'm saying there are days he's at daycare or days that he's at home for spells while she goes to see clients. But she has a way to say, okay, if he's feeling like this, would he rather be in the car and with me as company and I can put blankets in it and, and, and keep him comfortable? Or would he rather be at home where he can just stay and have his own things? So she's also figuring out what his level of comfort and those needs are. Mm. Does he want someone to come over to the house to let him out? Does he want daycare? She gets to hear those messages from Hank. Did you want to read another one? Yeah, if you're good Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Okay, so that was from June. Now this is September 2019. Another check-in for Hank for a skin rash. (laughs) Guide said it was related to his food that he needed to change to one single protein he had not eaten and follow vet instructions uh, he would clear. Oh, and if he follows vet instructions, he would clear. Sorry, I'm reading this verbatim and it's not Mm -hmm. perfect, but that's okay. Um, They also said he needed Apoquel. Uh, which is a drug that's on trial for um, allergies for animals. Uh, and we're specific in the name of aller. Pardon me. We're specific in the name for mm-hmm. allergies and to keep him on it for a month or two. Also said the rectal abscess was related to poorly tolerating other food. That's super important. Um, vet appointment. She was pleased we had switched foods and offered Apoquil without me asking for it. Nice. Uh, Two months later, Hank's skin is almost completely healed, and he has no arthritis pain or stomach issues any longer. He is spry and no longer needs glucosamine for joint pain. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So I want to talk about this one. Oh, she's got more. Sorry. Yeah, but can I interject for a minute? So our co-worker, Parker Sarlo Trelevin... Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Gets a shout out here. Mm-hmm. Because during, okay, so when, when Jane phoned, I was sitting in my chair in the treatment room looking out at the beautiful 
backyard in nature, as I usually do. And Parker showed up in the room. And I thought, oh, so physically, Parker shows up in the room. Yeah, he often will just like walk right in. Yeah. And sit in front of you. Yes. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. And he's looking at me. Like he's just staring at me and I'm thinking, oh, okay, Parker has messages. He's got to tell me things, but I had no idea what. And as Jane started, I hear Parker, I think, in his thoughts saying to me, um, uh, I need, uh, you, you need my Apoquel. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and all I hear is Apoquel, Apoquel. And Parker is on Apoquil. Mm -hmm. So I thought he meant that you and Eric hadn't given him his, his Apoquil. <laughs> I'm glad he will stand up for himself too. And that he needed it. And he's just looking at me like, you are not listening. So the head kind of goes and cocks like to the other side. Like, are, are you're you, not getting this. Are you, are you here, grandma? Like, are you listening to me? What's happening? And I just thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm missing part of the message. I have to, but I have to concentrate on Parker, but I'm listening to Jane. And then she said that she wanted to check in with Hank. And that's when I said, oh, and Parker showed me his paws itching and red and his skin with rash. And I thought, oh, okay. So then he got up and walked out. No, he didn't physically have that. No. But so he, he's showing it to you within your own gifts, not yes. on a physical level. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. I, I so forget I have to clarify this shit. So he well, because I'm, you know what I'm doing as a as an average <laughs> listener. No offense, I'm picturing like, did the dog stand up and show her his belly? Like, what oh, did he like? No. He can't put his arms in the air. No, that's right. Thank you. I appreciate your participating. Okay. <laughs> so. As soon as I understood this, Parker left the room and I thought, oh, I've got messages for Hank. So I said, Jane, I have messages for Hank today. He has a skin rash. And she goes, uh, yeah, it's, it's part of my, my hour. So let's start there. Could you start with Hank? And then I thought, oh, he needs Apoquel. He has food allergies. So everything that I know about Parker and all of the messages he was trying to give me by staring at me in the room and all of the stuff coming from him, I'm passing on to Jane to say, these are all the things I'm getting for Hank. And somebody might think, what? But that's how this works. And, it, it, and if it sounds confusing, it is. There, there is confusion. The only time you get the we get clarity is when the veterinarian says this is all correct, mm -hmm. and when Jane is able to give me those affirmations, so I can put it out there and with the best of intentions. Because at first, I know you and I would put a message out there like that, and we might feel crazy, we might feel doubtful or curious, but now there's more confidence because there are all these affirmations over many years coming in saying there is accuracy. Mm -hmm. So because of a system, both Jane and I feel confident in the messages that Hank gives me. Mm -hmm. They're constantly being checked mm -hmm. both by her and by the veterinarian and by all of the other professionals. So I'm going to, I'll let you continue Sure. Reading. So before we move to the next date, it says the next check-in, uh, the guide said he will age well now on the new food and that any human foods like bananas, which he has had a ch uh, as a treat, were uh, adding sugar to his system that was causing joint pain and health issues. This was a lesson for me, they said. He was demonstrating to me what uh, ridding sugar from the diet can look like. So to help the dog, but also to inform Jane how she's potentially hurting her own joints. And this is something that has been a consistent thing, I think, in so many of their sessions where she will point out or the guys will point out to her that she is to learn things from his experiences and that mm -hmm. she has an opportunity to do that if she chooses to. Yeah, well, we're all, we're all supposed to be doing that from each other's experiences. Karen's got pursed lips and she's oh, shaking her head. For just, those of you just hear by audio. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so we've gone from September, 2019. Hmm. 
Okay, we're jumping here, but that's okay. So this is March 14th, 2019. I'm wondering if she dated the other ones that were supposed to be 2018, um, because now we're in March. Guide said that Hank was having loose bowels from anxiety, need to check in with a naturopath on what I can give him, keep an eye on him as it's due to aging. If it persists, see a vet. Uh, gave him rescue remedy, which would get he'd get from a naturopath, uh, on and off over a few weeks, and it settled on its own. So to clarify here for people, um, his 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 spirit was the one that told me all of this information. She didn't ask me about it. He voluntarily told me, and he also told me rescue remedy, and that he wanted this from a health food store or a naturopath. And because of her own background in healthcare, she is familiar with some of these things and is very open to it, as opposed to if there's something wrong, it has to be a prescription. She can easily um, see the benefits of natural things as well as medicinal, mm-hmm. which is beautiful. Cool. Mm-hmm. Am I continuing? Sure. Okay. So April 14th, Hank checks, pardon me, Hank picks up on everyone's emotional energy around him. He needs breaks to have his alone time in order to self-soothe. Can I pause there? So he, he told her um, that he needed his alone time, but he also needed a daycare. And being on the island, he felt isolated Mm -hmm. and that he wanted friends and not just her as a human friend, but that he needed another dog. So she actually went out of her way to find a place where they had dogs that he could walk with someone else and where he could go and have his time without her. Yeah, to be in a pack. Yes. I I love how Jane hears what his needs are and and doesn't hesitate to step in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, so... Further to that, we're still on the same date. We often check on Hank's physical body in sessions to see if he needs adjustments and when. Hank has let me know he does not like the chiropractor in a particular city, I'll say, as he was, uh, she was not actually adjusting. Mm -hmm. He had been to an animal chiropractor in North Bay previously and said that he preferred her style. Yes. And this was very important in sessions because over a period of time, and I don't know how long this is. She's trying to figure out, okay, I've moved. So do I go to the one closest to me? Because remember, she's on an island. Mm -hmm. So it's an excursion to do this to begin with. It takes several hours. Or do I double my hours and go even farther? And she makes a decision to go even farther because he's not being adjusted. And how do you know that? You're only going to know that if you actually go to the other person, the second person, and see that the adjustments that should have been been made weren't. Mm -hmm. So she followed up on that to see that, yes, in fact, Hank behaves, walks around, can move, isn't slow to walk. Those improvements. Total improvements to see the difference between the two um, two chiropractors. Cool. Um, okay, I'm just going to put this up here for a second. This is obnoxious. Um, What's obnoxious? Well, I'm kind of, this is not great for camera, but that's oh. okay. Not the information. This is great. Oh, I okay. Okay, so the next thing that she writes is, a session a year and a half ago, the guides told me that Hank was feeling isolated living remotely without oh. other dogs to be near. He needed social st- stimulation, didn't have to be daily or even playing. Um, but he could see and hear other dogs around him. If he could see other dogs and hear them around him, he would benefit emotionally. He now has biweekly playdates with a dog friend who the guides have said he likes. And we check in on that. Love it. Uh, and goes to dog daycare once a week with a man who he loves to spend time with. And guides confirmed he likes the male influence in his life. She checks in if he's happy in his relationships. Very cool. Um, Guides also screened the dog daycare and ongoing follow-up to ensure he still likes being there and is treated well, and he sees other dogs at the daycare. So she would ask questions like, does this gentleman treat him well? Yeah. So she wants to make sure that he's not being neglected Mm -hmm. or being abused in any way. And 
he, th- this just comes through with flying colors that Hank is happy and that this man is, well, we'll just call him John. Um, I hope that's not his real name because <laughs> we're changing <laughs> well, we names. we changed but, everything, so it's okay. Um, but to make sure that that relationship is a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, the guides often talk about how much love we have for each other, which is mm. amazing for me as a human to feel this level of connection with a dog. I often can feel it resonate between us. It makes me feel blessed. He told me he feels taken care of and valued. Mm-hmm. Okay. So give me two seconds here. Cause there's a, Oh, okay. It's just this one sheet. So then she wrote down and going by memory three to four years ago, mm-hmm. Hank had an injury, but it didn't show up until later in the day. He was sitting on me and would not let me pet him. He was trying to tell me something, but I didn't know what I went over his physical body and he did not react. So you can do like pat checks if you're not a, a an animal owner. Um, I called you. His guides told me of his left hip and knee injury and right shoulder. We discussed options for providers and pain medications we needed to heal. Emotionally, he was sitting on me because he felt he would be seen as useless in his pack being this injured. The guide suggested that I reassure him. I went to the vet and all of the injuries were confirmed, as did the natural dog healer. Hank has, pardon me, Hank had numerous treatments of laser and adjustments and over the few months was able to heal. Yeah. It, like. That's a big deal. Yeah. All and, of those things individually and then cumulatively. Yeah. That, that's, that's a quality of life that you can't otherwise necessarily know how to give unless you are a vet. And how. And all, even then. And have all of the equipment to run all of the tests. And I think this is something... And who has an animal laser machine? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and a vet can't... Pardon me, I shouldn't assume this. I would assume that a vet doesn't have a license to adjust animals because that's a chiropractic license. Right. The same way your physician wouldn't be adjusting your neck. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I love what you said, Kelly. I don't even really know how to add to it. I think people are just hearing today two love stories. Yeah. Between an owner and her duck and an owner and her dog. And that we have different pets. Some people might relate this to how can this help with a, with a child? If you're getting these messages for nonverbal, which mm-hmm. this is a story about giving information on behalf of someone who's nonverbal. Mm-hmm. So if someone's listening to this and going, I have a nonverbal child or, or partner. My baby doesn't talk yet. Pardon? My baby doesn't talk yet. Yes. And that we do help in all of those situations as well in the same type of way. And I think the second story illustrates that over a period of years with regular check-ins, that a whole system can be seen by the client that how, how you and I function with the spirit world Mm -hmm. to be able to create all of the affirmations medically, Mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, er in so many different ways, behaviors, because some of these things, when we, when, if we really break it down, she would say, how is he today? And I would describe all of the behaviors and she'd go, well, yes. So what's going on? And I would say, well, give me a minute. And then I would switch to medical intuitive and say, oh, he's pulled a ligament in his shoulder. Oh, he's done this. These are why the behaviors changed. Mm -hmm. And she might say, all I noticed was that he didn't want to move and he didn't want to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Or he wasn't interested in his food, but she can't figure out any of the reasons for it. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, you're very welcome. And and I want to say thank you to all to these two women who chose to share this, mm-hmm. and um and and are willing to say this is how it's helped them and their pet mm-hmm. because anybody that has a pet or a child knows that when they're not feeling good you don't feel good, and I mean uh, emotionally we feel upset. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that means we can't focus at work or in other aspects of our lives because we're preoccupied. Mm-hmm. And that this can be helpful and kind. I think that's the last thing. I want to say end on that and say how kind this process is. Good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so if you have questions or comments about today's show, you can email us at info at buysarlo.com. If you're listening just by audio, again, thank you so much for mm-hmm. your interest. Um, thank you for listening in. Thank you for sharing us with your friends and family. And if you're with us by Patreon on video, thank you so much for your financial support uh, and your continued interest as well. Um, and your enthusiasm for all the people interacting with us mm-hmm. over Patreon as well. Um, we hope you have a beautiful day and we will be back next week with a new show.